Sylvia, can you tell me when and why you came to Harlow? I came to Harlow because we didn't stand an earthly to get a place in Tottenham where I lived when I got married because I was only in one room. Came down here, my brother came to my mother's house on a Saturday and he said, what are you doing here? I said, well, we can't get a place. I'd have got one boy then. Um, no, I'd got two, sorry. Um, my boy was about five and I had a baby of six months. And he said, come down to Harlow. His wife didn't know. We jumped in his van. We came down, he lives at Tilbury Mead. And they put us up. My husband got a job at AEI. And we got, that was in the August. And in the January, we got our house in Carter's Mead. And I thought it was a palace, because I was only living in one room. So take us back to this, you said Tottenham. To, well, I, li I was born in Edmondson. Okay. Right. Uh, and then I met my husband, and then when we got married, we went to live with his parents. Was it quite tough back there? Yes. Yes. What was one room? The best you my, my, my room was about nine foot by nine foot. I had a double bed and a baby's cot in it. And that was at the bedroom, because it was above a shop. And you used to have to come down a, a spiral staircase from the bedroom to the kitchen. And then you had another flight of stairs down to the main front door. It wasn't their shop, it was, they lived above a shop. And it was... Hell. Yeah. Was your husband working? Yeah, he was Where working for the Stettners then when we were there. Yeah. In so, Tottenham. Did, and I said, not only did times feel like they were tough there, you know, with, with well, food yeah. and work. Yeah, and yeah. You were living more or less from hand to mouth, sort of thing. You were trying to, your best to do what you could. And, uh, but I think it was happy. Times were hard, but we were happy. And, and this changed to Harlow. Tell me, remind me, which year was this again, if to best of your memory? Uh, 1957, no, 59, 59. So you, you heard, so how did you, did you say you travelled by van to Harlow? Yeah, my brother's Can you physically van. remember? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And when I moved down here, I came down here in an open van when we got our house. And I came down with a double bed, one single bed, a cot, and an old fashioned, what we used to call a meat safe, which was just like a cupboard with a bit of wire in the front. And we had to furnish a house. So tell us about the Palace of Carter's Mead. Well, the Palace of Carter's Mead, when I saw the bathroom, you know, I thought, oh, and the separate toilet. We had an outside toilet when I lived in Edmonton, but in Tottenham, you did have, and then because it was above the shop, we did have in town. But um, yeah, it was uh, quite nicely decorated and had a lovely long garden, although we didn't really want a long garden, we only wanted a medium size. And I was quite happy there, and I got my little home together. And uh, when the kid was old enough, I went to work. Where did you work? Uh, first of all, I used to do outdoor work, working all hours. And then I managed to get a job in my trade. I went to Greece and Thomas. I've had a couple of other little jobs when the kids were small. But then I worked at Greece and Thomas until Shriver took over, until he closed. Yeah. And remind me, what did Greece and Thomas do? Upholstery. Yeah, upholstery. I was a, a cushion filler, a machinist, a bit of everything. So things like in Harlow, now we've sort of moved to the Harlow bit, like shopping, How did, where did you go and shop? First of all, we went shopping at the Stowe, and then of course the town centre, and I used to go to the town centre, although on a Sunday afternoon, because when I moved from uh, Carter's Mead to Spinnywell Mead, on a Sunday afternoon there used to be a little shop in Tull Green Village, that was opened on a Sunday and that done a little roaring trade because everyone came round. We had a man come round in the van with shopping, you know, little bits of shopping what you wanted. Um, and then, of course, we had the town centre, which was fantastic in them days. A little bit about the town centre. Did you call it the high? <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. That seems to have gone. People yeah, call it the no, high, they, that, yeah, <laughs> it was called the high. Because mm. 
where, uh, I don't know what it's called now, but where Wimpy's Bar is, it, that was the bird cage. Right? That was the first thing, and that was lovely. That was like sort of a bit of a ballroom with a bit of a restaurant. But it's changed hands mm. so many times. Yeah. And what about shops in the store? Are there any particular shops in the store? That you yeah, know? there was a, a shop where we used to get the children's school uniforms from. There was, um, uh, well, you had the chemist, you had uh, a bike shop. Uh, you had quite a few shops there. Yeah. Uh, you had, Eli um, what's it, Elliot's? Elliot's on the corner that done the radios. You could rent a television or rent a radio. And what about things like economising about your budget? Would you have to run to a, you know, a life at home? Was it, was it like run right to a tight budget? Uh, no, well, what are you, when I went to work, I used to shop over at uh, Potter Street there. I used to get my weekly groceries. There used to be churches and butchers. There, I used to get all my meat there, churches and butchers. And being as I went to work, I used to put a book through, and they used to deliver it on a Friday night. And well, I think if I, I should have kept one of the books, I mean, to pay two pounds and you'd got all your stuff for the week. You know what I mean? What about socialising? Um, well, I never went out much when the children were young. Um, but uh, we'd go, I'd go out with the firm if they had an outing, like a show at the West End or something like that. But I didn't go out much, not until they, I think my boy was about 14. And he said, oh, I'll go out and have a drink with Daddy, you know, because I said, oh, no, I can't. He said, no, I can look after David. And did you have where you lived in uh, Carter's was, was there a sense of community and knowing Yeah, your I was uh, very, very lucky. I had lovely neighbours. We all helped each other. But that, wherever I've moved, I've had lovely labours. Yeah. And do, do you think that's one of the big things about Harlow? The Harlow that you knew? Or the, the Harlow, Harlow I knew, yeah. The big community. was very good. And I can remember, I think we paid a shilling a week extra on our rent for the sports centre. Right. Yeah. And I, would, and I can remember now, it was on the television, Harlow Newtown it was called. And it had the most beautiful and well-equipped sports centre. It was on the telly. Yeah. yeah. And so did you always live in Carter's Mead? Did you move? No, in? I've had five moves in the town. Oh, right. <laughs> five moves? Tell us about your five moves. Are you on the run? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, well, I, I, I had a three-bedroom house in Carter's Mead, and then a young lady, with a, uh, she'd got two girls and a boy, and I'd got two boys. She didn't want to move out of our turning, she asked if I would do a swap with her two bedroom for our three. And I asked my husband, he said, do what you like, I don't care. <laughs> as long as I've got a roof over my head. So we done that. And then my husband's two aunts came down here to live. And um, Auntie, uh, Auntie Gold had got um, a bungalow in Pitfields and Auntie Dora she was a bit lonely on her own, so we moved to Moorfields when it was being first built, and we had her living with us for a time. Um, I loved the house, but when we moved over there, there was no buses running then. But um, it had that warm air, heating blowing air, and my husband and boys just sore throat upon sore throat. So we got an exchange to cut a uh, spinning wheel meat, and then I stayed there. There again, lovely neighbours. And then, when Auntie Golda lost her sight, I said, well, she can't live with us in Spinny Will Me because she couldn't get up the stairs. So I said, if we can get a flat, she can come and live with us. So we got a flat over by the church there. And she lived with us till she passed away. And then we came here. And I've been here 19 years. 19 years, so yeah. just so explain to me, we're here in the Manor Hat Shelters. What do you call it? Do you call it sheltered no. accommodation? Yeah, or? sheltered accommodation, yeah. yeah. And you have your own, you, again, because we're now here in 2017. Yeah. But you have a lovely community here, don't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, myself and the young lady, well, young lady, she's nearly 90. Um, we run a little club here for them, and there's all the things up there, what we do. There's something going on every day. So do you feel you've sort of repeated the community feeling you had when you lived in these different places like Carter's Mead and Spinning yeah, Wilmead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 
so in conclusion, you, um, uh, you've had a happy time. Oh, That's yeah, it. I love it. We're in the past tense. We're in the, still here, aren't we? Yeah. You've had a happy time. Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love our life. I wouldn't go back to London if you paid me. No. <laughs> not even if there was a palace there. I would definitely not go back. Is it, I mean, I guess the answer is probably going to be no, but is it the Harlow... Is, what do you think of Harlow in 2017? If you wanted to make improvements... I think it's deteriorated. Why is that? I don't know. Way? It... They don't seem to have cared about it, the bushes and that, and I know it's money, it's money every time, but it don't take long to sweep the road and come round and cut the bushes. I mean, I shouldn't say it perhaps, but we've got ivy growing up the ceiling, we're waiting for it to be cut down. You know, they don't seem to maintain their things. So you'd like me to have a word, maybe the leader of the council, who might be seeing this and saying... Well, I don't care, because I've, I've phoned the star about our lift being out of work, work for three weeks. Oh, you're ringing the wrong newspaper. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. But, you've, um, but you still enjoy living, as I said... Oh, I love it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I love it, I love it.